I think I probably just let myself fall off. Be funny if that was a game over. Okay, now we can head down. So there's three tiers here, as you can see. There's even one below this as well. I forget what the one below it is for, but I'm going to go this way first. Maybe because I've done it a couple of times recently, maybe I'll remember a little bit better what I'm actually supposed to do here. Let's have a look at this one. Okay. Okay, so I need to pick up an, another Bevel Sphere from somewhere. That's the first priority. I might have to like fast forward this or something because it just takes long. I might as well talk about um, a few little things while I'm doing this because there's not really much to say about this cloister. Uh, they called me from work this week to, to ask me to come in for, for one day and I said no because I'm just too busy with this and other stuff. But there is a chance that the project that I spent five months working on is going to continue soon. And if that happens and they call me back for it, then I'm going to be back to work uh, regularly. So unfortunately that means that it's going to be very difficult for me to continue recording the commentary. So I'm doing my best. I mean, what, what free time I get, I'm making sure that I spend it on commentary. But it's, uh, it's going to be tough. So we'll see what happens and I'll keep you guys posted uh, through the commentary. But um, for the last couple of months that I was on the project, the kind of months four and five, uh, I only had to work three days of the week, so that left uh, that left two days to be able to to do this stuff. So okay, this is the, the exit for close to actually. Wrong again. Yeah, so sometimes that happens if the, if the project starts up again and it's only three days a week again, then it's not too big a deal. I still have two days a week to, to record the stuff, so it won't be so bad. Ah, oh, shit. I went the wrong way again. Damn it. You have to do so much backwards and forwards here. So yeah, that's the work situation. So... So yeah, that's the work situation, and other than that, I have a lot of people asking me about Final Fantasy X-2 for the movie version. And again, that's not something I'm going to be doing, because I've already done that fairly recently, and I've recorded it in, in half-decent quality as well. So I'm not going to bother going through all of that again, because that took me a long time to make, and I'm not going to do it all over again within the space of a year. So Because the Final Fantasy X movie was genuinely pretty shit quality, but X-2 is, uh, is not so bad. Obviously the HD remaster will still look much better, but the quality is not really bad enough that I really, really want to redo it. And of course it's no lie, I've never made it a secret that I don't, I've never enjoyed that game that much. Okay, hopefully now I should start to, to make some progress. I need to pick up that, I think it's a Glyph Sphere or a Besaid Sphere. I think it's a glyph sphere. And then once I put that into the furthest bit, I should be able to get through. Um, I've kind of decided that it's pretty much certain that I'll only continue Uncharted 3 after I've done the, the movie version for Final Fantasy X. And Final Fantasy VII movie version has been a long time since I've uploaded anything from that. Um, to be honest, it never really got that much attention anyway, never really got watched that much, so I don't know if I'll continue it. I probably will, but those take so long to make, and because it's um, cause there's no voice acting and it's text space, it's probably going to take a very long time to record everything. I think I'm seven parts in or eight parts in, and I'm just like nowhere for the story. There's still a long, long way to go, so I really don't know what's going to happen with that. And with the summer looming as well, I, I have other things I want to do, so I'm not making any promises for Final Fantasy VII. As much as I did want to make sure I completed that, it's just taking a hell of a long time. And like I said, it didn't really get the, the kind of response that I was, uh, I was hoping for. 
Uh, hold on now. I have to put the sphere in somewhere and it destroys part of the thing that's blocking the pedestal from moving. So I should be able to, to do this now. Because, I mean, for this commentary playthrough, we still have all of the, the post-game stuff to do, so there's still, like, probably months of work to do for this project, so it's going to take a while. Obviously, most of the post-game things like grinding, most of that will, will be done uh, off-screen, so... Okay, I should be able to finish it up. Once I put that destruction sphere in there, it should do the trick. As you can see, there's a there's a pathway that kind of goes upwards, and that's the end of the the cloister. So if you use the destruction sphere here, that will allow your pedestal pad thing to keep going once you actually get there. Excellent. As far as I know, there is an extra treasure that you can uh, get here, so it's in your best interest to go down one more and get that other bevel sphere as well. Very important note, if you're um, doing the side questing stuff and you want to get the hidden Aeons, like I've said countless times, you have to make sure you get all of the, the Destruction Sphere treasures. Now, this temple is an exception. A lot of people will think that they've missed the, um, the treasure here, but you cannot complete this Cloister of Trials without getting the Destruction Sphere treasure anyway. So, the other one is an optional treasure. So, all you have to do is actually complete you know, complete the, the cloister, progress the story, and you already have got the um, the treasure that you need. So the other one is optional if you want it. I mean, I remember I, I personally wasn't sure either, because there's a second chest, and uh, at the time I couldn't be bothered to get it, so I was thinking to myself, do I really need to, to get this in order to, to do it? Because, obviously, uh, the thing to be noted about this temple is that you never get to enter it again. So once you've done this cloister once, you will not be able to come back inside here again. So for that reason, I thought to myself, oh crap, I've forgotten the, the Destruction Sphere treasure, I'm never going to be able to get the Hidden Aeon. But it's not the case, so you don't have to worry. And I think that's probably the most important thing to take away from uh, Bevel Temple, more than anything else. There we go. Done. Just the, the optional treasures to go. Can't deny that it does look like a funky place. But once we're done here, there's going to be um, a lot of story stuff that, you know, if you're new to the game, you really should be following closely because it's going to explain a lot about the way Yevon and Spira works. So that's the Destruction Sphere treasure that I was talking to you about. So you have to you have to get it in order to progress the game anyway. And this is the reason why I got the second uh, sphere. So that you can get this uh, optional treasure as well. I forget what it is. Is it a weapon or something? I think it's a weapon. Yep. For Kimari. Okay, good stuff. We're done with Cloister of Trials. I am... Ah, oh, shit. I need to go one more sphere level. I'm going to give Tidus the um, the HP sphere because he is uh, he is lacking compared to his other other friends. I mean, the fact that he's behind Riku is, is unacceptable. And Kimari's weapon is pretty nice, but it doesn't have piercing. So, and it doesn't have a sensor, so I'd rather trade 8% less damage for the piercing and the sensor. Okay, story time, boys and girls. Yuna? Inside, maybe? Then what are we standing here for? Hey! 
you can stuff your taboos! Okay, so the whole Yevon thing turned out to be a sham, so I don't think they particularly care about teachings and taboos anymore. But very important story stuff here. What's that? A faith. They join with the summoner, and together receive the Aeon. They are human souls, imprisoned in stone by ancient Yevon rites. The dead should be allowed to rest. Yuna! of them. You are to stand trial. <laughs> I expect it will be a fair trial. <laughs> of course it will. Son of a bitch. Okay, so here we have the, uh, the fifth and final regular Aeon that you'll get in the game. And any Aeon from this guy onwards is a is an optional Aeon. And he is pretty powerful, and he looks pretty awesome. So, it's all good. But now we are to stand trial. And, yeah, it's probably going to be very fair, as Oren said. But what's, uh, what was very interesting in there is that's the first time we've seen the inside of, uh, you know, a Chamber of the Faith. It's probably the first time Oren's been in there as well. And uh, while Yuna was praying, there was the the faith was in there, and it looked remarkably like the the little guy that was in uh, in Zanakin right in the beginning. So, what does it all mean? More and more intersections between Zanakin and Yevon. The High Court of Yevon is now in session. The sacred offices of this court seek nothing but absolute truth in Yevon's name. To those on trial, believe in Yevon and speak only the truth. Maester Kelk Ronso. Summoner Yuna. You have sworn to protect the people of Yevon, true? Yes. Then consider. You have inflicted dire injury upon Maester Seymour Wado, conspired with the Albed and joined in their insurrection. These are traitorous and unforgivable crimes that disturb the order of Yevon. Tell this court what possessed you to participate in such violence. Your Grace. The real traitor is Maester Seymour. He killed his father Jiskel with his own hands. What is this? Hmm? Haven't you heard? Not only that, Maester Seymour is already dead. It is a summoner's sacred duty to send the souls of the departed to the far plain. Yuna was only doing her job as a summoner. 
Grand Maester Micah, please send Seymour now. Send the unsent to where they belong? Yes. <laughs> Maester? Send the dead, hmm? Uh. You would have to send me, too. What? Grand Maester Micah is a wise leader. Even in death, he is invaluable to Spira. Enlightened rule by the dead is preferable to the misguided failures of the living. Life is but a passing dream, but the death that follows is eternal. Men die, beasts die, trees die, even continents perish. Only the power of death truly commands in spirit. Resisting its power is futile. But, what of sin? I am a summoner, my lord, like my father before me. I am on a pilgrimage to stop the death that sin brings. Are you... are you telling me that too is futile? <sighs> Grand Maester Micah, I am not alone. People who have opposed sin, their battles, their sacrifices, were they all in vain? <laughs> Not in vain. No matter how many summoners give their lives, sin cannot be truly defeated. Their rebirth cannot be stopped. Yet the courage of those who fight gives the people hope. There is nothing futile in the life and death of a summoner. Never futile, but never ending. Hmm. Indeed, that is the essence of the heaven. is embodied by eternal, unchanging continuity, Summoner. No, that can't be right. Those who question these truths, they are traitors. Lord Micah! your breath. Man, I hope Yuna's okay. Hmm. She is strong. She'll make it. She'll make it? What, so she can die? Why is it everything in Spira seems to revolve around people dying? Ah, the spiral of death. Huh? Summoners challenge the bringer of death, sin, and die doing so. Guardians give their lives to protect their summoner. The faith are the souls of the dead. Even the maesters of Yevon are unsent. Spira is full of death. Only sin is reborn, and then only to bring more death. It is a cycle of death, spiraling endlessly. <sighs> I think that wins the award for most uses of the word death in a speech.